let's go before God in prayer and then we'll get uh, down to the Word of God. Father God, we just so thank you for this time that we can come together and, and share the Word of God. We thank you, Father God, for the anointing. We know that our God puts words in our mouth supernaturally. And we thank you, dear God, that the word spoken tonight will be words of life to those that hear them. And in all things, we give God the glory and the praise and the honor. For it's in the name of the Lord Jesus that we declare and decree these things. Amen. Bill did a, a marvelous job this morning uh, preaching on anointed to prosper. Now, I'm going to teach on prospering. <laughs> I'll use uh, a few of the words and scriptures that, that Brother Bill used. Therefore, a while I thought, well, he's going to take <laughs> the message that I got prepared, but I'm going a different way with it. We're going to talk about a different prospering. If you'll pay attention, as Bill brought the word of life to us this morning, Joseph was not blessed financially as far as his finances were concerned. Now, I'm sure that he could take money out of the kitty, if you, if you will. I'm sure there was enough money for him at any time he wanted to use it. But it wasn't his money. Now, pay attention to the scripture. You'll find out he was anointed to make somebody else prosper. I'm sure he lived well out of this anointing to prosper. But the main focus was that he was prospering other people. Even when he was thrown in prison, he was prosperous in that endeavor. In that, he was prospering for the number one jailer, the number one man in the jail. He gave him jobs to do, you know, and he prospered in that. And if you'll pay attention to the Bible as, as you read through it, you'll find out that God has anointed us to prosper in different areas. Bill was sharing with us that God had anointed him to prosper with computers. And we all know that. But if you think about it now, he also prospered Bill to teach the Word of God. And these are anointings that God places upon people. I dare say every person has a particular place that God has anointed them to be in the body of Christ. Some people never find that place. And then again, as Bill was sharing with us, some are lazy and don't get that, that job done. And that's easy to fall into, being lazy. You can blame it on whatever you want to blame it on. You know, I was uh, on the commuter the other day, and there's a pop-up came across the screen, and I had not seen this pop-up. And it's for men over 
35, 40 years old, uh, talking about they lose their testosterone at this age, it starts to slacking off, and the older you get, the less testosterone you have in your body. And you need this, and, it, and, and they're telling you the reasons that you need it, uh, like your muscle mass keeps falling away because your testosterone, and it's, now I'm probably saying it wrong, but I'm, I'm in the ball game with it, I think. Um, I'm saying it wrong, aren't I? A little bit. Um, see, this is new to me, so uh, I have to get somebody to teach me how to say it just exactly right. But anyway, um, the muscle mass falls away because of the lack of it. And what they were doing, they were giving you information about a product they had, and it's very new, three or four months old, and it comes from a plant and it's all natural, and, and you get it at the G GNS stores. GSC or whatever? <laughs> Yeah, it is a C, isn't it? GNC? GNC, that's right. But anyway, uh, you could say, well, a chemical imbalance in my body, and I just don't feel like doing this, or I just don't have that drive. And another thing that this, this uh, I guess it's a chemical in your body, um, if you're lacking or it's not being manufactured in your body as it should be, um, it has to do with your memory. There's just lots of things that, that it offsets in your body. And naturally they're, they're trying to sell it. But anyway, you can make that as an excuse not to do what God wants you to do. Well, I just don't ever feel like it. I just don't have the drive I used to have. God will give you the drive. Yes. God will give you whatever you need if you'll ask him for it. Now, I'm not against taking vitamins and minerals and things like that. Um, if they make you feel better and make you more active and whatever. That doesn't bother me. And I, I take fish oil and calcium and things like that. Um, but I, I just want to use that as making a point. What I'd like for us to do is go to Psalm 45, verse 7. Psalm 45, verse 7. Now, in this entire 45th Psalm, he's talking about Jesus. The psalmist is talking about Jesus. And it looks like it's uh, King David's Psalm, you know. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Okay, if he's anointed above thy fellows, that means that the fellows are also anointed. And we know God, uh, that Jesus had uh, the anointing of God without measure. So, as children of God, we have that measure. And I, 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 I want I want to make a point about certain words in, in these passages. The word anointing, anointed, 
That's a key word in what I want to get across tonight. Anointed. And the other word is gladness. And we're really going to major more on gladness than any of the other words. We're anointed of God with a measure of the oil of gladness. Now, we've seen it in the church where, where we just, the whole church would laugh at one time. You know, that, that went on for several, several months in the church. And it was a wonderful, wonderful time in God. It was a learning experience for lots of people. I'd never seen it up until that time. And to me, that anointing came on us because everybody done it. And they do it in unison. But you have that anointing in a measure all the time. You know, Brother Bill used some uh, examples in his life. So I'd like to do the same thing. Um, and I guess all ministers do this. Um, of the mornings, and a lot of times God will wake me up at 4 o'clock. Like this morning, it's 4 ish. It might have been 15 minutes after. I don't know. I just remember seeing four on the clock. And I, I lay there for a while, and I was wide awake. So I know that God is wanting me to pray. I want to spend some time with him. Because I have absolutely no sleep in me at all. And, and didn't go to bed till after 12. But I was wide awake, felt rested. And uh, my prayer closet is our computer room. It has carpet on the, the floor, which is really easy on your knees. And I have these throws. You know what throws are. Mine's probably about seven foot and about so wide. And I just drape it around me and I, I'll kneel there the chair and pray and this happens to me most every time that I get on my knees to talk to God I start laughing the joy of being in his presence is awesome you know uh, the last time I preached I, I said many things about his awesomeness to me, to have this anointing come on me like this every morning of my life is awesome. The awesomeness of God's anointing working in, in, a, in a person. And I just, I just think it's just the neatest thing how God does things like that. So you start out the day right. Think about that now. You start out the day right. You, you start out the day with being happy. Now, this word gladness, we're really going to tear it apart. Um, I, I've gone to three different um, areas to get meanings of the word gladness. Next, if you will, let's go to Hebrews 1 9. Now, you know, we read in Psalms, the last scriptures we read in Psalms. Now we're going to read the same identical scripture in the New Testament. 
Now, he was talking about Jesus in the Old Testament. So, he was... He was being anointed to talk about something that was going to happen. And there were other things he was talking about in this anointing about Jesus, the uh, 45th uh, Psalm. And the writer of Hebrews brought it over into the New Testament. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Now he's added some words to this. Another thing that that does is there's another witness of that same word. There's a witness of it in the Old Testament, and then there's a witness of it in the New Testament. And there's not that much talked about about gladness. You know, just like salvation, there's not a lot. The most important thing that a person can ever do is get saved. There's not a whole lot written about salvation, you know. A lot written about faith. I think, the, see, I counted up, there's uh, the word gladness and glad. It's only mentioned 54 times in the Bible. So that's, that's what I'm saying. There's not a lot written about gladness. And now I'm going to read some things. Well, I've got another place I want to go. Let's go to Joshua 1.8. He said, why are you... Going to Joshua. The anointing is going to come the same way. The anointing Bill was talking about this morning is going to come the exact same way as the anointing for gladness comes. Now he said he anointed, God anointed him with the oil of gladness. So it wasn't something, it's a spiritual thing. It comes out of the realm of the spirit. It comes from God who is a spirit. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe and do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Now, I want to go a little bit further than Bill went this morning on that scripture. Let's go uh, to verse 9. And this is what God said, Have I not commanded thee to be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, and whithersoever thou goest. doesn't matter where you're at. The anointing that God has placed upon our lives will go with us. The anointing comes from God, and if he's with us, whithersoever we go, the anointing has to be on us and in us. Now, I'd like to get um, the, the word itself, gladness. I want, I want to 
go through this, and it's going to be uh, oh, I don't know. I'm going to go through it uh, greatly, break it down in different parts. Now, the prime root to this, I'm, I'm going to talk about that one first. Uh, if you want to look it up in um, Strong's Concordance, it's uh, 7797. It's the Old Testament, and it's a Hebrew word. And the word is Salson. S-A-W-S-O-N-E. Salt sun. To be bright, cheerful, be glad, greatly glad, joy, make mirth, rejoice. Now, the word mirth is in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Now, out of the prime word in the Hebrew, this comes, uh, the number is 8342. And a lot of times it'll add a little bit to it each time that you go to another directive where one may say cheerful and the, the, the top one said cheerful. This one says cheerfulness. But it also says something else that, that, that was really um, surprising to me. And this is what it says, specially welcome. Gladness, joy, mirth again. and rejoicing. Now, I pondered on this specially welcome. And if you think about it, if you get in this place where every time you pray, that gladness comes upon you, you'll find out that's one of the most welcome things that'll happen to you. You desire it, and when it comes, it's very welcome to you. You you will welcome it in your prayer time. Now let's go to the the New Testament words, and the New Testament word is twenty. It's found number twenty word and number twenty one word. The Greek is A-G-A-L-L-E-E-A-S-I-S. Agali. As is. <laughs> so you got to say that all together. Now, it'll add some words to it that you won't hear in the Old Testament. Like exaltation. And here again now, in the, in the New Testament, it says, specially welcome. Gladness, exceedingly joyful. And this where this laughter comes up. It's that, that exceedingly joyfulness that comes upon you when God is anointing you with the oil of gladness. Now, number 21 adds, it has the same, same words in it, but it also adds, adds some words to jump with joy. It also has with it to be exceedingly glad. 
and again, it, and, and when it says rejoice, it says rejoice greatly. So you can see that all this is, is hedged around your pleasures. It's making you joyful. God wants his people to come before him with joy. Now, you know, God wants you to come boldly, but he also wants you to come with joy. Some of these words uh, have the connotation of, of peace. And I know every one of you have, um, when praying, it'll just come to your mind I'm in the most peaceful place I've been in in a long time. You're probably there every, every time you pray, but you just think about it, or God reminds you of it. I don't know whether it's just you or me, or God is reminding you. In our meetings, a lot of times, uh, especially new people, when we pray, they'll say, I've never been in this kind of peace. So, you're exceedingly joyful, you're exceedingly peaceful, you're exceedingly glad. Just out of this one word that God is, shall we say, emptying out upon us. He's opening the, uh, the windows of heaven, he's emptying out. Everything that, that uh, you prosper in is not money. And Pastor brought this up, and Brother Bill brought it up, and, and we know that. Uh, I'd say most of the time we'll prosper in areas outside of money, outside of finances. Like, I think, for myself, I prosper wonderfully in the oil of gladness because it's there all the time. Now, I, I believe this too, that Joshua 1.8 tells you how to get there. You know, there's a lot of people that are sad. There's lots of Christians who have would you say burdens upon them and they don't even know what it's about uh, they're taking pills for sadness and loneliness and, and things like that I believe that this oil of gladness that we're speaking of now goes much further than, than I am bringing together and let me give you a good example of what I'm talking about and I think I've shared this with you before. Uh, when I was coming from Branson, God told me that one of my very best friends was going to pass. And I knew it had to be either my wife or my mother. They're my two very best friends in the earth. God's my best friend, but they're my two best friends in the earth as far as I'm concerned. And in about three weeks, I was uh, painting very high up in a building, and I had my painting. I was on my way up, and the other guy that was with me, who was the owner's son, the owner of the business that I was painting for. And when I got up to the top of the ladder, it, I don't know how to explain it. I just had a knowing something's wrong. I need to see my mother. But when this came upon me, I told the fellow I was working with, I said, I have to go see my mom. So I got my lunch pail and I left and I knew I was going to be gone all day. I spent the day with her. But on the way back from Branson, God told me this. He said, I will strengthen you the first day. And then the, some seconds later, he said, and I'm going to strengthen you the second day. 
And there's a few minutes in there, and he said, I'll strengthen you the third day. And the next thing God said, he said, and I'm going to strengthen you during this time. My mother and I, we have, I've always had a wonderful relationship with my mama. She was a, uh, an awesome, awesome, awesome lady. And I love that woman with every fiber of my being. And looking back after this happened, I said to myself, I can't imagine anybody being that strong. I had the joy of God all during this time in my life. And today, even today, when I think about my mama, it just seems like I'm more in a rejoicing mood because I know where she went and I know where she's at and I know she's having a good time. And I expect that woman is singing. I, I just expect God's got her in some kind of a choir, and she gets to sing all she wants to. She loved to sing. Wonderful woman. And I want to read to you, and this is out of Webster's Collegiate Dictionary. And, and I looked up the word... gladness again and this has all the words that I've already read to you plus and this is a little more in depth gladder gladdest characterized by joy or pleasure cheerful pleased expressive of or caused by gladness, bringing or exciting gladness as glad tidings, characterized by brightness and beauty. See, now we haven't got that word yet, beauty, up until now. Gay, beautiful, delightful, joyful, pleasing, antimating. And I thought this, this was really great, um, bringing excitement. And I'm excited when I go to pray. And I wish everybody, everybody in the world that prays could, could come before God in this manner. The anointing is there. And how I got over here in this place, I have no idea. It just, God took me there. It wasn't something I did. He took me to this place. And I have enjoyed it, people. Let me tell you. Now, uh, let's go to Philippians 2.29. And I've got a lot of places that the word gladness is uh, mentioned. Philippians 2.29. And this is Paul talking to uh, one of his friends. Receive him therefore in the Lord with gladness. Let's go to Acts uh, 14, 17.
I may not read all of these. 1417. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness. In that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful season, filling our hearts with food and gladness. See now, we ought to, ought to underline this one, uh, filling our hearts with gladness. Acts uh, twelve fourteen. Who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house may be saved? Wow, I must have put that one down wrong. Oh, I got the wrong one. <laughs> 14, 14, 14, 14. Come on. Come on, Mr. Ward. Wake up. Seventeen. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven, fruit for season. What have I done? I got fifteen that time. Fourteen, seventeen. Got a page stuck together. get it <laughs> and when she knew Peter's voice she opened not the gate for gladness but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate I want to go to uh, first Timothy 414. 1 Timothy 414. Now, you know, anointing is a gift of God. It comes from God. And this is what the writer says, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of presbytery. Now, I understand that he was talking to Timothy and about a particular situation, but I believe God would say the same thing about the anointing on any of our lives. Don't neglect that that anointing that's on your life. God gave it to us for a reason. 2 Timothy 1, 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. There was an anointing that came upon Timothy by the putting on of Paul's hands. But he's telling here to stir that gift up. Now, I believe this with all my heart. 
the gifts that God gives us, part of that anointing that you've got should be remembered with thanksgiving. For years, I thank God for the joy that was in my heart. This was, this was years ago. And every time I'd go to pray, I just, I just sense that great joy and that peace. And I would thank him for it. And I'm not too sure that this anointing I'm talking about came about but one way, thanksgiving. God wants us to have the anointings that, that he has for us. And I think a big part of the anointings working in our lives is being thankful. There's one thing that I have tried to do all my life is be thankful. I thank God for our church. I thank God for uh, my friends here at the church. I thank God for the anointing. I, there's times when, when I just sit and thank God for, for all the beauty that God has placed in my life. And I think that that is a, a way of securing from God things that, that we want and need in life. It's Thanksgiving. You've got to ask Him for them. And you know, you may not uh, say in, in healing, for instance, you ask God to be healed, and you don't see a manifestation of that healing, and you start thanking God for that healing. And I'm telling you, if you'll stick with it, the healing will manifest. Yeah. That's showing God where your faith is. You don't see it yet. But you know by the Word of God, and God cannot lie. Why would it be any different from... The prosperity bill was talking about, some Brother Bill was talking about this morning. Why would it be any different asking God for, to show you or another measure of the oil of gladness? And I'm not sure that you get another measurement. I don't know. It doesn't say you can. But if you're not walking in it, have him to show you teach you. God will teach you. God is marvelous, marvelous, marvelous in his desires that his people have in their life. The manifestation of the word of God. If it, manif if it manifests in Paul's life or John's life or Luke's life or, or whomever, in Timothy's life, God will do it for me and God will do it for you. And I think a lot of it comes by thanksgiving. We ought to be a thankful people. We ought to be thanking God every day of our lives. Because there's so many blessings. You know, I've got grandchildren. And I just thank God all the time for those grandchildren. I, you know, for you guys that have grandchildren, there ain't nothing like having grandchildren. It's, it's just a different... You'll, you'll understand one day. I promise you. They're just... unspeakable joys that come in your life. I just love to just sit back. Now, my wife's a little different than I am. She wants... She wants her hands on them, you know, feeling of them and patting them. And I can sit in a chair somewhere and just watch them and absolutely be filled with joy. 
That's my posterity. Look what, look what God allowed me to do. And then you, if you live a long time, you'll get to see your great-grandchildren and your great-great-grandchildren. And my mother got to see her great-great-grandchildren, several of them. And every, every one of them loved her. I think we're going to cap it off right here and, and hope that everybody got something out of it. Um, something you can take home with you, something that that'll give you joy in your life. You know, that's what people who are watching you want to see. They want to see what what's going on with you. And if you're if you're joyful and cheerful and, and they're sad and downtrodden all the time, they're going to want what you've got. And you can tell them how to get the oil of gladness in their lives. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Just make him Lord and Savior. And God will give you that measure of that, that joy and peace.